Oh. Okay. <clears throat> I would like to start with thanking the organizer for inviting me to speak to, me, to you today. Um, and the idea of this talk is to present to you a new concept, a new hypothesis of how longevity is evolved. And since there is no time left at the end of the talk to uh, acknowledge the people who donated to this work, I'm doing always at the beginning. So you can see the font, the name, and as I know, nothing is standalone. Everyone is uh, involved. So those are the name. I present to you two population of um, extremely lonely individuals. One is in the US, New York, under the responsibility of Mia Barlow. I could talk to you about that yesterday. And the other one is the one that I established here in Israel on centenarians from Israel, okay? I would like to start with the picture that uh, Nir showed you yesterday. And this is a, a picture that was uh, done like 80 years apart. Just a couple of anecdotes about those guys. The number next to these people are the, the year uh, when the age they died, uh, when, when they die. Um, the older sister smoked two packets of cigarettes every day for 90 years. So here's another secret of longevity. If you smoke for 90 years, two packets of cigarettes, you live alone. The other one is this guy, which uh, uh, takes in rifle, He's the older broker in the New York City. And when he was not 105, he was reduced because he retired from managing his company that's worth like $700 million. He sat in the, uh, the front of the um, office and he, will, he decided which one will uh, come in the, and they will invest and which yes. one they don't. I'm talking about disease prevalence, lean income variation, physical uh, activity, lifestyle, and cognition. In each one of these classification, we show that uh, centenarians are resilient to environmental effects, meaning the environment doesn't affect them. So what, what is affecting them? So here I present to you the uh, clock or the biological uh, age. So if you look at the biological age, you see that our Eli, the exceptional long-lived individual, the centenarians, have the, uh, their age is around 95 and older, but the biological age is like 20 years younger. We measured those biological age by methylation, which is a candidate for uh, environmental assessment. So if, if you look at them, you see also that the control doesn't have a minimal effect while the offspring, which means the offspring of centenarians has the same effect or the same prevalence as their uh, parents. So we know that offspring of centenarians has some of the, um, let's say the health performance of their parents. And we say, okay, if it's come from them, there is might be some genetic insight. So how can environment affect on the offspring? How it can be translate to the next generation? So here we need to answer two questions. First, is the environment, where can we measure the effect on the environment of those people? And second, how it's, how it's inherited to the second generation. So, we can count, we can analyze how much genetics is in longevity. Oh, like, you know, 
sibling and uh, whatever. And we know that uh, the longevity or the genetic component in longevity is about 10 to 20%. And we know that the environment is negligible when we talk about centenarian. So what comes, what is the major effect of those guys to live longer? So what we think is the genetic and environment interaction, which label as epigenetics. And this counts for the 80, 90% of the uh, phenotype variance between the longevity variance that we see in people. So, and the next question, how is it heritable? For this, we came with the hypothesis, or I came with the hypothesis that, uh, of the switch theory, which account for genome flexibility. So just to illustrate for you what is a uh, switch theory, eyes on me, not by, on me, okay? Focus, let's start. When you come to a door, everyone can look at the behind, you have a switch, okay? And this switch is control the light. When is instead of switch, which means the switch can do yes or no, meaning light or not. But if you replace this switch with dimmer, you can be more flexible in the amount of light that you have in the room, right? If you have a dimmer, you know what is dimmer? Yeah, it's a button. Uh, yeah, and you can, you know, dim a little bit more and then you have, you can control, you have more flexibility in the way you want to see your light, right? Now, imagine you have like 10, 10 de dimmers like this, okay? So the flexibility, it's much more. Now, let's turn back to biology. Imagine the switch or CPG site, meaning um, a place that can be changed by environment, the interaction that we talked about, okay? And so the switch are the sequence and we can find them or look for them when we do whole genome sequence. But then we don't know if those switch do something to the light. So then we look for methylation percentage, okay? Methylation percentage is like the dimmer that can say 10% light, 50% light, 100% light. And now the big catch it's how it controlled the light. And this is the expression of the gene. Okay? With me, understand? Let's go. Now, this is just an illustration, but I will talk about it later as well. You see here that those are CPG island the switch to turn on or off the gene. And you can see here, if it's black, it's mean it's turned on. If it's white, it's turned off, okay? So with aging or with longevity, my hypothesis says that those guys has much more switches. And why it's important? Because if you have much more switches, you can adapt to any given environment. If you have only one switch, it's one environment. But if you have 10 dimmers, you can do hundreds of environments. And that is why the environment doesn't control those extremely long individual, okay? So we can do many uh, ways to come in to turn on the gene and the number we can play with the switches and the number of switches and how much methylation we have. And if it's turned on or turn off the, <clears throat> the gene. So to conclude, excessive amount of CPG site may provide regulation flexibility in genes involving age associated mechanism in a level that allow fine expression monitoring and thus adaptation to environmental stressor. This mechanism may promote longevity. And this is the thing. 
Such mechanism may exist in any resilience phenotype. I mean, it's not necessarily associated with longevity, which is a good phenotype. It can do the same in, let's say, Alzheimer, that people has resilience to Alzheimer using this, uh, uh, the same uh, me mechanism or Parkinson or whichever you think. And with this, I would like to end, have a year of healthy uh, living and all those pictures are of centenarian. This is the 100 meter dash runner. This is marathon. She's doing yoga and she smoked for 100 years. Thank you. Okay, whatever. Any question? Hi, thank you. Um, this is really interesting. Like to, you hear about uh, different levels of regulation, but it's really interesting to think that the, yeah. there's different amounts of uh, regulation within certain levels of regulation. Um, uh, the first question is terminological. Why do you choose uh, flexibility over uh, robustness, let's say, when you're talking about um, regulation, right? Because um, you would think there's like some optimal that you start at and you know, with age it declines. So that sounds more of like, a robust system where you have more options for things to go wrong at specific sites it's, versus flexibility where it's changing to a specific direction. Uh, I don't think this maybe. way. Okay. Yeah. I'm uh, to, I think robustness to... can be in the same gene, in the same spectrum. There is no, it's not, there is no need to, for excessive amount of, of uh, genetic materials that can affect the, uh, whatever you look for. And flexibility, meaning it's to use whatever you want into, in the sense of it. So, and it doesn't mean it's, um, when I'm saying flexibility, it doesn't mean that those, uh, let's say, interaction between genes will fit a very stress or environment. It can be also a good environment. So there is no robustness in this case. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the second question was, um, these CPG islands are, uh, these like differences, these uh, extra uh, CPG uh, locations are heritable? They passed along? Uh... That's why I'm saying it. Because it's on the DNA, it's heritable. So if the, if the centenarian has it, the kids as also. But it's not always uh, expressed. Uh, in no, no, it's not. It's, it, the, the meaning that you have a switch, it doesn't matter that you will use it but you have it in case you need it. Thank you.